This chapter will provide an animated guide to implanting the STAR Vision Surgical Implantable Contact Lens, or ICL. Remember, in cataract surgery, the crystalline lens is removed. In ICL surgery, the crystalline lens is preserved. This simple yet delicate and precise implantation procedure begins by making two paracentesis. Two are suggested in order to provide adequate access for manipulation. It may be difficult to make a paracentesis after the main incision has been made. Next, inject a hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose type viscoelastic into the anterior chamber, maintaining visible chains. Do not overfill the chamber. Stay shallow with a cannula, but deep enough to avoid stripping Desimé's membrane. Avoid crossing the visual axis. When making the clear corneal incision, the temporal approach orients best to the iris plane. This prevents inadvertent touch of the crystalline lens. Using a knife you're comfortable with, make a slow and controlled entry. The clear corneal incision should have a cord length of 3 to 3.2 millimeters with a 2 millimeter tunnel on a parallel plane to the iris. You are now ready to inject the ICL. Place the tip of the cartridge with the bevel down just inside the incision. Slowly inject the ICL using a tapping motion until the leading right landmark is visible. The ICL will unfold in a slow and controlled manner. Do not fully inject the ICL until you see the landmarks. Remember, as long as the ICL remains within the cartridge, you still have control of the implantation process. Be patient. If the ICL unfolds with the landmark on the left, it will be delivered upside down and will require removal, inspection, and reinsertion. Once the ICL has unfolded, Inject additional viscoelastic on top of the lens to give yourself more room. Never inject viscoelastic underneath the lens. Now the ICL must be repositioned posterior to the iris plane via the paracentesis using the ICL manipulation instrument. Keep in mind that the central 6 millimeters of the ICL is considered the no-touch zone. Avoid going across the visual axis. Manipulate on the peripheral area, never on the optic. Using the ICL manipulator, position the distal foot plates first while the pupil is maximally dilated. Once the first foot plate is under the iris, continue with each of the foot plates until they are all posterior to the iris. Avoid excessive rotation of the ICL once it's in place. Once positioned behind the iris, subtle adjustments are achieved by manipulation on the lens body between the foot plate and optic. Never depress the optic itself. This is the thinnest part of the lens. Thoroughly remove the viscoelastic by irrigating the anterior chamber with BSS through a 27 gauge cannula with slight incisional pressure. Thorough removal is a critical step to avoid early post-op intraocular pressure spikes. After confirming that the foot plates are behind the iris, and that all the viscoelastic has been removed, constrict the pupil with Myocol. Test the wound to confirm a self-sealing closure. Following surgery, apply a topical antibiotic, anti-inflammatory, and steroid. 